I see you. I see you for everything you are and everything that you could be. I see you more than HD, it's that clear. I see through you. And I see you in all your glory. Hashtag no filter. Hashtag pure. Hashtag beautiful. Hashtag I love you. I see you in all the ways that my mind can edit the photo of you in my memory. I see you in sepia and saturated in hues of blue. I see you. Modified and cropped. You do more than slow down my hands the time you make them stop. Just long enough for their fingers to intertwine with mine, boy. We sure do make a good team. I see you. And even if I went blind and couldn't, it'd be okay because I feel you. Feel you in the gentle breeze, because miles away you breathe. There's a ripple through the air that found me. I feel you. Because branded onto my fingertips is the blueprint of your face. I'll never forget how to reconstruct you in my mind. And with these same fingertips, I can reach you like Braille because I can feel your story. You're so tactile and sensitive to the touch. I feel you. And I hear you. I hear you when you speak, but much louder when you silent. The hollow of your empty words vibrates, ricochets, and echoes through the caves of my mind. And I hear your cry for help because your heart beats to me in Morse code. It says, save our souls. SOS, SOS, SOS. And I hear you when you sob silently because I'm in tune to your tears. They speak to me from the comfort of your eye because that's where they reside. I'll catch you. I will. And I'll hold you until you're ready to let go. Until you get your strength back, despite setbacks. Until you can feel your legs again. It's okay. I felt numb too. And then, and then I'll hold your hand. And an osmosis of apologies will penetrate through our palms because hard to say out loud. And so I'll squeeze. I'm sorry I never told you that you're one of the most courageous people that I know. That I'm proud of you. That I've never seen anyone take care of orphans or widows like you, which made me want to be an orphan or a widow too. That I admire you. That it's been an honor to be the object of your affection gift, that you're an extraordinary man, and that if you were to put together all the atoms in your DNA strand, it would make you so the bomb. <laughs> and I know that's Corey, <laughs> but I know how much you like to laugh. So I hope that you're always happy, and that life always gives you something to keep your cheekbones raised, and they gleam in your eye, because this is not goodbye, it's just, I'll see you. So, um, the next piece I want to do, I've really been into road trips lately. I mean, I've always been into road trips. I've, I've always been into traveling, and I love flying, and I absolutely love driving, especially if it's a stick shift. And I have never, had never been on a train ride before a train trip. So, never been on a father-daughter train trip. So my dad and I said, let's do this. Let's take a 60-hour train trip from Sturdivant, Wisconsin, on the Texas Eagle, to visit my grandmother in Deming, New Mexico. And so, we did it. Two years ago, May, we went, and it was amazing. And you can imagine the people that you meet and the stories that you form, and 
all the experiences that you have on a trip like that. So um, I met this one particular woman, and I wrote about her, and um, it kind of starts off with a song, and I am the worst singer that you could ever imagine, and the only times that I think that it's okay for me to sing is when I'm in the shower, when I'm in the car, and um, at worship. Those are the times I have no shame, and I'll sing at the top of my voice. Um, but it also helps the people sing along. And I know everybody here in the child part of you knows this song. And if not, I know most of you have a smartphone. So if you want to use a little bit of your data, look up the um, lyrics to theme song for Sesame Street. Um, and then you can sing along. If you don't look it up, or if you want to just, if you know the words already, or if you just want to hum, tap, snap, something that um, doesn't kind of like, kind of drowns out my singing voice, that'd be great. <laughs> um, so it just starts off like this, and then we're going to the poem. Sunny day, sweeping up, clouds away. Thank you. <laughs> On my way to where the air is clear. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? Come and play. Everything's a-okay. Friendly neighbors there, that's where we'll meet. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? How to get to Sesame Street? Thank you. Well, today's poem is brought to you by the colors black and blue and by the letter D. D is for Delilah. Delilah was black and blue. Delilah said, He apologized. He said, But look what you made me do. Delilah had one daughter. Delilah had one son. At 13 years old, her mom sent her off to live with a man who was 21. Delilah had an addiction. Delilah danced for drugs. Delilah said she knew not the meaning of unconditional love. The state took Delilah's children. Delilah said, I felt like there. At times, I reasoned within myself. I deserved to be abused. Delilah was from Daytona. She lived with her abuser in D.C. She was escaping by train to Dallas, and that's where she met me. Delilah's dog days are over. Delilah's got a safe place to stay. Be strong, I tell Delilah. She said, I'll be okay. Yeah, I'll be okay. And I, so I watched this woman, this fiery red-headed woman, disembark from the train in somewhere in Texas on this beautiful, cloudless day in May. I couldn't help but wonder whether the child that never really got to be a child inside of her was singing this song. Sunny day, sleeping up, clouds away. On my way to where the air is sweet. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? Come and play, everything's a-okay. Friendly neighbors there, that's where we meet. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? How to get to Sesame Street. Um, the last piece I want to share has to do with another road trip. So, uh, December, I thought, never took a trip by myself in a car to Florida. I'm going to do it. <laughs> got in the car, drove through Cincinnati, Ohio by myself, stick shift, 
downtown, uh, down south through Atlanta, Georgia to Orlando, Florida, where I got to welcome my brand new nephew, Benjamin. Hey! Yeah! First boy in the family! Yeah! <laughs> so um, that was exciting in itself, but then my mother and I decided we were going to take a road trip back up. My mom is a storyteller and she's also into genealogy. And so we decided we were going to do a mother-daughter trip, genealogy mother-daughter trip, up through South Carolina and North Carolina. Um, uh, we found some pictures at Duke University that a uh, famous photographer took of our family members and found out that that famous photographer was actually a family member. And then we also found out um, where our ancestors, um, as far as different plantations actually in South Carolina, where we could trace our ancestry to. So actually got to go visit um, rice plantations in South Carolina and it was an amazing experience, which um, made me think about this last poem that I do. And it really helped me to actually visualize it, to be there, to, to smell the way it smells, just to be by the water, it was, it was amazing. So this next poem um, I want to do, and it, I tried to embody this character and to really think about where she would be at this point in time years ago where many people were in captivity um, and in that area at the time. And to how in this time, in slavery time, Many people, um, many people died just of a broken heart. People think you can't die of a broken heart, but you can die of a broken heart. And at that time, there would be bogus um, you know, uh, diagnosis of mostly acute indigestion, something to do with upset stomach. Mm. That was causing many people to kill over and die. Um, but in this poem, it's called Heart Death, and it kind of indicates that um, it's not necessarily the case. Coming from the eyes of an eight-year-old who's getting into maybe grown folk talk, maybe telling a stranger things that maybe she's overheard. A lot of times children will be the first people to talk honestly. You wanna know something? I'll tell you something. <laughs> Sam died yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yup, yeah, yup. Yeah. They said, said his heart just up and stopped pumping. Master say, Master say he died on account of something called acute <coughs> indigestion. He died on account of heart death. That's just what I think. <laughs> Master say, Master say, that's been the way he ate. Can't nobody die eating too much of nothing. Thing. You want to know something else? Master's son, Master's son turned five years old last week. Yep, he did, he did, he did. He turned five years old last week. And Sam, Sam ate it right off the ground. <laughs> the master said, Master said he didn't care if it fell. Slaves don't get no birthday. And Sam always told me, you were nobody's slave. You were nobody's property. And, and to count on him being five and all, you know, he, he had too much strength yet, so Sam's back wasn't messed up too bad. And Sam, Sam didn't even holler out. Mm -hmm. But he did on the inside. That's just you know what they say heart death is like? <laughs> they say it's like, it's like being drowned in a river. Only different. They say, I think, I think heart death is like, it's like when Master's children push my face into the sand until I ain't got no more breath to holler and then they laugh and I laugh too. <laughs> Just cause they want me to. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 mm-mm, no, no. Hard that they even like that, I think. You know what they say? They say I favor Massa. They say Massa my daddy. Mm -hmm. What you think? You think like I think? Hmm. 
my mama say I think too much. That of course she got all the kind of heart that Massa said. Must have been the way she ate. Present tense. Mm -hmm. 